To quote the greatest living philosophers of our times, the Venga boys, we like to party. We like, we like to party. Of all the things that our species has created in its lifespan, coordinated play is right up there at the top along with the wheel, slow cookers, and the party album by the Venga boys. When we gather to play a game, it can create a jubilant mix of laughter and excitement, and no subsection of board gaming chases that dragon harder than party games. Light on rules and primarily focused on player interaction, laughter, and quick turnaround, party games are a multi-million dollar industry that almost totally dominate the mass market gaming scene. There are a lot of cheap cash-ins, one-joke ponies, and air quotes edgy adult games out there looking at you, Cards Against Humanity, so we've put together a list of some of the very best that your money can buy. This is the collection starter, and this time we're looking at 10 fantastic party games. Number 10, Dixit. People are weird. Here's some. God, aren't they weird? One of the things that makes us all different is how we interpret signals. When some people see the color red, they see danger. Some see romance, and some run at it as fast as they can because those people are bulls. Interpretation is at the heart of Dixit, which is not a funny word. Grow up. It's actually a wonderful French party game played with cards that are famous in the industry for having some of the best artwork around. Every turn, one player will secretly choose a card and come up with a phrase or a word or a sound or in anything that describes it. People then look at their hands and try to find a card of their own that maybe fits that description as well. You get points by both finding the correct card yourself, but also by having other players think that yours is actually the correct one. The joy of the game comes from trying to work out how your fellow players are thinking, getting this collection of cards and knowing that the description is true romance. So thinking, well, which one's the correct one? Does that mean this card is correct? Or maybe it's this one? God, what if it's this one? What's their psychosis? Number nine, don't get got. Party games are called party games because they're so accessible they're frequently brought out at, you guessed it, funerals, but also parties. Most party games require players to sit down and all engage at the same time, but not Don't Get Got, which is a game you actually play in the background of an actual party. The players are all given a little sleeve at the start of the game containing six secret missions that they have to carry out. Those missions could be hide this card in a jar and get someone to open it, hide this card on a player without being caught or get a player to say you're not ugly. You then need to carry out these missions over the course of the entire night without getting caught out by fellow players accusing you of attempting to carry out a mission, which means do you play the long game and establish you're not happy with your appearance over the course of the night as a long con, or do you just blurt out I'm ugly to try and get a player to bite before someone else accuses you of doing that mission. It's the closest you can get to role-playing as an actual spy and hatching these skills Teams can be tense, messy, hilarious, and frequently the best kind of embarrassing. Number eight, concept. Everyone knows charades. It's the game where you have to try and get people to guess movies or books, etc., using only gestures, and unfortunately you can't play it anymore since Grandma accidentally pulled Basic Instinct out of the hat. Well, concept is charades, but instead of using gestures, you use, well, Concepts. You get a board full of symbols which can mean different things to different people. This symbol can mean evil or death or danger, and this can mean power or politics or leadership. You use cubes to combine symbols together to build a picture of a movie or a book or an animal or a fictional character. Like Dixit, it's a fantastic tool to see how your fellow players think, and sometimes people fall headfirst into the gaps in your translation because they completely misinterpreted or your collection of weird runes and symbols could possibly mean. Very few games make you feel as clever or shatter as many barriers of communication as concept. Number seven, say anything. Sometimes it's just fun to hang out with friends and bond via the universal medium of taking the piss out of Jeff. Am I right? Jeff, am I right? Nothing gets you laughing at Jeff quicker than say anything. It's a beautifully simple game. Everyone gets a pad and a pen. Jeff reads out a question like, what superpower would I most want to have? Or what's my idea of a perfect date? And then everyone writes their answers down and reveals them. And most of the time they will be absolutely roasting Jeff's 
balls off. Jeff secretly picks his favorite answer and then everyone bets on which answer he picked and that's how you get points. But all that is secondary to just being part of a group of friends trying to out funny each other by answering personal questions about Jeff. Because ultimately, we all like Jeff, we all like each other and the experience is as comforting or as wholesome or as mean as the group wants it to be and it's delightful. Number six, monikers or time's up. There are two games on the market that re-implement the popular parlor game Celebrity, where you pick a name of a celebrity or a movie or a book, etc. from a hat, and you have to get your partner to guess it by describing it without using the name. Get as many as you can in the time limit. In the UK, we have a hugely popular game that uses this system called Articulate. However, what makes Monikers and Time's Up so great is it's played over three rounds. First round, you can describe the things to be guessed using as many words as you want. Once that round's over, all the things that were correctly guessed get shuffled and used again for round two, but this time you can only describe each thing using one word. Then you have a third round where you're trying to get people to guess the same things again in a different order, but this time you can't use any words, only gestures and the lines of communication just dissolve into chaos. Part memory game, part articulate, part charade, it's frantic fun. If you're wondering which game you should get, Time's Up is a bit more basic and accessible for a wider range of people. Monica's is a bit more engineered towards wackiness. Time's Up might have a card that says Jeff Goldblum. Monica's will have a card that says drunk Jeff Goldblum. How you react to that is a pretty clear indicator of which version you prefer. Number five, wits and wages. Everyone likes trivia games, right? No, incorrect answer. Now don't you feel stupid, idiot? Look at the idiot. Look at the person who doesn't know the thing. Most trivia games gatekeep victory and award it purely to those who happen to know the most. That may be the point you shout in what I assume is a tiresome way, but it also makes them very lopsided in terms of fun. Wits and Wages takes that general premise and twists it in a beautiful way that manages to even the playing field. It combines trivia and gambling. Basically, every question has an answer that is numerical in nature. How many centimeters tall is an Oscar statue? What year was Superman first published? And everyone writes down a number on a pad. However, players then bet on who they think is closest to the right answer. That is how you get points, not by being right yourself, but by betting a certain amount of points on who you think is right. That's genius. You may not know anything about Superman, but you know that Sarah does, so you might bet on her answer. Anyone can win. No one feels dumb and gambling is fun. Number four, say what? Believe it or not, Say What was not designed in the 90s despite its radical bodacious name, Cowabunga. One of the best things about party games is that while they're excellent at being played by friends well used to each other's taste, sense of humor, general bullshit, but they're also brilliant at ice breaking, providing on rails interaction and regulated chat to cut through awkwardness. God, board games are great. Say What, sorry, Say What is a fantastic ice breaking game. Like say anything, every turn someone's in the hot seat, they're given five cards, each with a concept on it like wealth, bed, honesty, chocolate, holidays, and then they have to use cards numbered one to five to rank those things secretly based on how important they are to them. Then everyone uses their own number cards to guess how that person chose. This game starts the best kind of friendly arguments. Nadia, what do you mean you value honesty above chocolate? You're lying right now about that. Don't you see the irony here, Nadia? Perfect for friends and family or even strangers. You can find out about six dates worth of information from someone in just a single game. Number three, code names. One of the most popular new party games of the last decade, Codenames has become something of a phenomenon. When there are Harry Potter, Disney, Marvel, Simpsons, and kinky adult versions of your game on the market, you know you've hit the jackpot. It's a team game where one person from each team is a clue giver and everyone else is guessing. You have a grid of words visible to everyone, but only the clue givers know which words belong to which team, which belong to team blue, which belong to team red. Then it's a race to see whose team can guess all their words first so you need to give clues that work for multiple words so that your team can guess more than one at a time. For example, I see the words drill and brush are both words for my team so I might say tooth 
two, so my team knows there are two words linked by that clue for them to guess. However, the real fun of the game comes with also making sure that your clues don't lead your team to accidentally guess words of the opposing team, or worse, assassin words, which instantly loses your team the game. For example, after I give the clue tooth, I look in horror to see the word paste on the table, and oh no, it's the assassin word. My team picks it, we instantly lose, and screaming, laughter, and finger pointing ensues. Deduction, tension, and silliness wrapped in one very marketable package. Number two, wavelength. A lot of the games on this list have something in common, in that a lot of them are about the communication of ideas in interesting or abnormal ways. Clues, inference, in-jokes, gestures, gambling, roasting the tits off Jeff. What makes so many of these party games fun is the disconnect that can be found between what you're trying to say and what people actually hear. It's a delicious tinkering with human psychology, and few games manage that as well as Wavelength. Also, none of them are as bloody gorgeous. Look at that. Wavelength is a game played with clues. Let's say it's my turn. I take a card, and that card has a range on it that says bad person to good person. Then I shuffle the dial, secretly look at it. That's where the points are. That's where I have to get my team to guess the position between bad person and good person. But they're doing that blind, so I have to give them a clue. If it was all the way to one extreme, that's easy. You could say Gandhi or Hitler, but what if the dial is here? What if it's only slightly towards the good side? What clue would I give so when I close the dial, my team will move the pointer to that exact part? Also, then relativity comes into play. If I give you the clue, your mum, is that automatically far towards good because it's your mum? But what about Gandhi? Is your mum more good than Gandhi, Jeremy? What about Gandhi? Hugely funny, better than code names, don't come for me. And number one, Telestrations. We can get very high-minded about games here at Phenomena, it's looking at the social and psychological reasoning behind a good time, but it's a truth universally acknowledged that it's fun to point and laugh at a bad drawing by a good friend. Telestrations is the beautiful child of Pictionary and the telephone game. Everyone has a pad, everyone has a different word to draw, and everyone draws for 30 seconds. Then they take that drawing, close up their pad, pass it to the left. That person then has 30 seconds to guess what that drawing is. They write it down, close the pad again, everyone passes their pad to the left. The new person picks up the pad, doesn't look at the original drawing, instead he looks at the second player's guess, then has 30 seconds to draw that. It keeps going like that with people guessing and drawing until your pad comes back to you and you see the hideous abomination that your original masterpiece has become. You drew a lovely pony, but over the course of eight other players, it seems to have become Yog soth off an outer god born of the nameless mist. Best played in large groups, simply put, I have never laughed harder players a game than when playing Telestrations. There's a version out there called Scrawl, which comes with edgy and more specific things to draw. Basically, it's what Monikers is to Time's Up. But for my money, the greatest party game currently available is this raucous gem. And that's our list. Did we miss your favorite party game off? Let us know what it is in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. And also, while you're here, please subscribe to Phenomenards. We're a brand new board gaming channel, and it's our aim to get you into board gaming. We want to be the bridge between non-gamers and gamers, building up this fantastic hobby we know as board gaming. So please like this video, share it around, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and get on board.